In this video, I will show you how to write a research proposal, what is the structure of a research proposal, what are the elements and how to put these elements in a document which you can submit somewhere. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Tahir and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a brand new video on this YouTube channel every Tuesday and Friday. This video was demanded by three of my viewers, Junaid, Zia and Joel. Hello guys. And I listened to my viewers and I replied to all your comments. So if you also have some questions, you can write in the comment below. So let's talk about a research proposal. A research proposal is a document which outlines your intended research. So this is the simplest definition of a research proposal. Why would you need a research proposal? So there are two main reasons. One is that this is part of your PhD admission application. And the second is that you have PhD, you are working as a lecturer or as a professor somewhere and you want to apply for funding. So in both these situations, the structure of the research proposal will stay roughly the same. However, the strategy will be different. And this I will discuss in another video. Because in this video, we are only going to discuss the structure of a research proposal. Although some universities try to assist students by giving them a template or a set of questions so that they can answer those questions and in this way they make their research proposal. But these are some of the elements which are globally accepted as part of a research proposal. So the title of course a research proposal has a title. Then there is a problem statement. Then you have to prove that the research you are intending to do is significant. And I will explain how you can do that. Then you also need to prove that this research or this project is achievable. Then the committee, the review committee or the admission committee wants to see that you have the passion and the motivation. You are self-motivated for a project, for a research project, which is PhD. Then on your research proposal, you have to describe the methodology you are going to use for your research. Also, because it is not an indefinite project, so you have to describe your work plan and your timeline. And you also have to prove that you know what you are talking about. So let's say, assume a situation in which you don't know anything about a specific research area and you go somewhere and you say, okay, I'm going to do this. And maybe 100 people already have done that. Then the only thing you can get out of it is embarrassment. So how to avoid that? So now I will discuss first all these elements. What does it mean? How you can do that? And then at the end, I will show you two more things. First is how to put these elements in a section of a document, which is your research proposal. And the second thing is a slide which will show you some general tips about writing a research proposal. Now let's talk about title. Title is mentioned at the top of this list, but you will reach the title at the end of your proposal. And by the end of this video, you will understand why. Now the first and most important thing about your title is that your title must be accurate at this stage. Because at the later stages of your PhD, the title of your research will change. In most cases, it will definitely change. But at this stage, you must be able to describe this accurately. The second thing is, you should give your title a very interesting angle. You should present your title in a very interesting way, giving it an interesting angle, interesting point of view. The third thing is that your title should be a little bit catchier, not too catchy like YouTube videos, but a little bit catchier so that it gets the attention of the committee. Now, the next important thing is that if possible, your title should contain some benefit, some benefit to humanity, some benefit to your organization, some benefit to general industry. And the next point is your title should be novel or modern. It should contain something novel, your methodology, part of your solution, and your title should be easy to understand. 
if you cannot describe your research work in one or maximum two sentences to someone, then you don't understand it well. You should be able to present the title in an easy to understand manner. And this is also important because some of your committee member may not be from your field. So they should understand what you are talking about, what is you are intending to do. And the last point is that you should not use any acronyms in your title. So these were some of the points about title. Now the next element of a research proposal is the problem statement. This is very important because you are trying to solve a problem. And in this regard, what you need to do is whatever you present in this problem statement should base upon some data. So you can get this data from Department of Statistics uh, like Bureau of Statistics or some other department, whatever uh, is the relevant uh, department. But you should make this foundation that there is a data available, that there is a problem. So you should consider four important things about problem statement. Number one, your problem statement must have a question, a problem. What is the problem which you are addressing in your research? And the second important thing is all the negative points of the current situation. What are the negative points? Why there is a gap in the research? What are the problems due to this gap? So these are all negative points. So these you will mention in your problem statement. And the third very important thing which you must mention in your problem statement is that why does it matter? Why it is important to solve this problem? What are the benefits and what is the size of the benefit? Again, some data if possible. So this is the third very important element. And the last very important element is that your problem statement must not contain any solution. This is problem statement after all. Now the third element is significant. How you will prove that the research you are intending to do is significant. So the most important thing you should note here is that this you can only evaluate if you have done the literature review. Now here is a point. If you are applying for a PhD position, a comprehensive literature review is not required. But if you are applying for a funding, a comprehensive literature review is required. So I would recommend that you at least do literature review using Google Scholar because you may not have access to other databases. So with this literature review, you should be able to realize that there is a gap in research and this gap if filled because not all gaps needs to be filled. Some gaps are useless. There is no point of doing research in some bizarre area which nobody has done. So you have to prove that this gap is important and it has some benefit for the community or for the industry which is the target industry for your research. So literature review will give you information about a research gap and then you have to prove that this gap is important to be filled. The third thing you can do here to prove that your research will be significant is by showing that your method or your approach is a novel approach and this novel approach has certain advantages maybe for environment or for anything it depends on your field. So I'm not going into specifics I'm trying to keep this video very general so that students from any discipline can get some idea. So these are three important points about the significance and how you can demonstrate that. Now the fourth element which you need to address is that this is achievable. Your intended research is achievable. So the first thing is that there must be some literature, some published peer reviewed literature should be available in that field of research. And sometimes people get it wrong. They think that if there is no literature, it is easy for us to do the research. But actually it's wrong. Not everyone is Einstein. And if there is no literature available, it would be difficult for you to do research in that field. So make sure that there must be some published literature available. But that literature must be peer reviewed, authentic literature, a journal article, for example. So this is one thing. The second thing you should keep in mind that you must keep the scope very limited. If you say that I am going to remove the hunger from this world, that is not achievable. So therefore, 
if you keep the scope limited, if you narrow down your research topic, that basically what you are trying to achieve is that this goal is achievable. At least this part, this, this narrowed down part is achievable. So don't keep your scope very big because the committee will think that that is not achievable. No, the third component of this is that you can do this. Okay, this is achievable. A scientist has recommended this method and he proved that this is achievable. Then the scope is also limited. But how will you prove that you can do this? You also have to discuss this thing that you can do this. There are a few things you can demonstrate here. The first is that if you have some published work in that area, some students are smart. They have publications while they are doing their masters. So if you have these, you can straight away put your publication on the table and that's it. The second thing you can do is that if you have done some case study, then you can prove this, that I have done this case study so and so, because some disciplines, they do research by using case studies. And the third thing, which is most common, you can do this, that you have done a very relevant coursework. So you can say that I have done a very good coursework in this particular field and I am able to uh, do this. So this is these are some of the ways you can uh, show that this is achievable and you can also do that. Now the next point is that the people looking at your proposal want to know that you are self-motivated and you have passion for this, passion for this field of research. You can simply state this statement but that means nothing. If you say I am self-motivated, I have passion for this, it means nothing at all. So you have to somehow show that you are passionate about this field. So how you can do that? So you can prove this by showing few things. For example, if you uh, have done some volunteer work in that particular field, you can say that I have, I was volunteer for this field, so I am passionate about this. Then if you have made some survey related to that particular field, for example, using a survey monkey website, you can make a survey in 10 minutes. So if you have made a survey and you have conducted a survey in some disciplines, survey is an important part of research. You can say that I have conducted these surveys, I have some results, some data, so I'm passionate about this field, then it will be okay. Then another thing which you can do is that if in the past you have done some unsupervised work, where there was little or no supervision, then you can prove that you have done this project unsupervised, so you are self-motivated. And there are a couple of ways. For example, let's say that you are writing blog posts about that particular topic on various blogs, online, uh, internet, on websites. You can say that I have been writing on this topic for, let's say, two years. So this will prove that you are passionate about this topic. Now the element number six is that you have to show the methodology, what theory or paradigm you are going to use for this research, whether you will be using quantitative methods or qualitative methods. If you are an engineering student, you will be doing some experiments. If you are a medical student, you will be doing some case studies. If you are from a marketing department, you might be doing some surveys. So these are the things you should be mentioning in this portion. So the next point is about timeline and work plan. So it's obvious you have to give a timeline and uh, I would recommend that you make this proposal in LaTeX and uh, you can also make a timeline, a beautiful timeline in LaTeX as well. And I have made a video about timeline. I will put a link here. You can watch that video, how to make a timeline. And the last point is that how would you demonstrate that you know what you're talking about? Again, the very important thing all this proposal is based upon some sort of literature review and this literature review will give you the ability to demonstrate that you know what you are talking about and when you will put your references in the bibliography and if those references are of top researchers are good uh, general articles so it will demonstrate that actually you have done a proper research about this and you know what you are talking about. So this slide shows you some of the general tips about writing a research proposal. Now this is the last slide and here I have mentioned you what element you should put in which section of the actual document which you will prepare as your research proposal. So this diagram is self-explanatory and uh, there are no hard and fast rules. You could uh, add some more sections in the document, for example resources are the equipment you need or some other uh, uh, sections but generally these sections are enough for your research proposal.
so i hope that you like this video if so please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel that will help me to grow my channel and make such videos thanks for watching and see you next time